Good news, everyone. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has just released their latest report on the state of the planet. So let's have a look, shall we? Excuse me, I have an important meeting to go to. Okay, let's just... Let's do this. Indy? Indy, come here. Up? Good boy, come here. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna need you here. Okay, hi. Okay. The news is bad. But here's the other thing. Like, it's not new news, you know? It's old news. Um, the IPCC report isn't a new study. It's like a meta-analysis. Um, every piece of data in it has already been peer-reviewed and published in a previous study. Uh, 234 scientists poured over more than 14,000 studies to collate everything into one understandable story for both poly policymakers and you, the general public, and me. And considering the fact that everything has already been published, um, and it's basically my job to pay attention to news stories as they happen, uh, especially when it has to do with science, um, what is it that I find so depressing? Well, it's actually like there's layers of depression here. So the first layer is just the upsetting fact of seeing it laid plain in front of my own eyes. Um, we can no longer say that 97, 98, 99% of scientists agree humans cause global warming and it's bad. It's not a hypothesis, it's a fact. They wrote, it is unequivocal that human influence has warmed the atmosphere, ocean, and land. The negative consequences of human action are observable in literally every inhabited region across the globe. Even if we completely stopped producing emissions right now, like if the human race just ceased to exist right now, those negative consequences would continue throughout the 21st century and beyond. And because we won't just stop existing right now, um, the negative consequences are irreversible for centuries to millennia. And if we don't significantly reduce our emissions as soon as possible, we're going to trigger cascading issues that become like a feedback loop where like the oceans and the trees and the things that help us will start to actively hurt us like when all of the trees catch on fire and fill the air with smoke so yeah seeing that all laid out a little bit depressing um the other layer of depression is because this exactly mirrors what we've just gone through the past year and a half with covid immediate and drastic action was needed but we just didn't do it um <clears throat> as of today 4.3 million people are dead and we can never, ever fix that. We can never bring them back. Those deaths are irreversible for them and for the families who mourn them. And then also for the many more people who survived but are left with debilitating illnesses. Like, you can't reverse that. But if we act now, we can make the future less awful for everyone. Um, and we know what we have to do. You know, we have life-saving vaccines we, that we have to distribute to everyone around the world. We need to remove all barriers for countries to be able to easily and cheaply produce their own vaccine supply. And we need to encourage social distancing and masking. And if we don't do those things, it's just going to, like, there's just going to be more death, you know? And if we don't, if we really don't do any of them, then it's just going to get worse and worse. And yet we're not doing a good job with those things. Even in the United States, where we have plenty of vaccines to go around, our politicians are downplaying the deaths in favor of the stock market. And some of our politi politicians are outlawing policies that would undoubtedly help, like mask mandates. And we have celebrities that are getting their own vaccines and keeping them and their families safe while encouraging their fans to reject the vaccine 
It's bonkers. And the pandemic is something that is, in a way, unavoidable to to notice it. You know, everyone around the world at this point knows there's a pandemic. A person can easily pretend that heat waves, Category 5 hurricanes, wildfires, and floods are just par for the course and have nothing to do with fossil fuels. But it takes an incredible amount of stubbornness um, and ignorance to deny the pandemic is happening. But they still manage to do it. And so they're going to do it with global warming, too. And, you know, the only difference between these two scenarios, between COVID and anthropogenic global warming, is that global warming is slower and larger in scale, um, which is good and bad. You know, slower is great. We have a little bit more time to act. But the larger scale means that the end result, if we don't act, is that our planet will be uninhabitable for humans in a couple hundred years. And I know that there are a lot of people out there that think that no matter how bad a problem is, we can always science our way out of it. But this report makes it clear that the potential challenges coming down the road, if we don't do anything at all, are so daunting that they may exceed human the human ability to overcome them like they may exceed our capacity like it would be like asking us to terraform mars tomorrow like we can't do it and in case you're hoping that maybe this report just isn't accurate let me point out a few disturbing facts like first we have more satellite data more buoy data more air quality data etc than we've ever had in human history and yet The second thing you should know is that back in 1990, the IPCC report said that by 2050, we could expect to see an increase of global temperature between 1.5 and 4.5 Celsius. And we are currently up to one degree and a sea level rise of 30 to 50 centimeters. We are currently at 20 centimeters. Like they predicted an increase in uh, the occurrence of floods and droughts and severe storms. And they said that the hardest hit would be those in the global south, thus increasing the gap between the developed and developing countries. And they were right. That was 30 years ago. They didn't have anywhere near the amount of data that we have now. And they were right. And we did nothing. And now we have even more data. And so I guarantee you they are right. <laughs> Things are bad. Uh, But if we do nothing, they're going to be much, much worse. We need our politicians to reject the lobbying efforts of the fossil fuel industry. We need to prioritize alternative fuel sources. We need to eat less meat. We need to stop billionaires from taking joyrides in space or from existing. We need to stop billionaires from existing. And, you know, that's kind of the third layer of depression is that I realized that I was so concerned with all these other things going on that I... I kind of let this be background, like I know it's happening, but I'm not, I wasn't depressed enough on a day-to-day basis. So, you know, and that was depressing, like that I wasn't depressed enough, (laughs) like this has been happening all of this time. So I guess the key takeaway here is that we should be depressed (laughs) or we should be worried, but not so depressed and worried that we climb into bed and just give up. At least not for, I mean, take a day or so with the news, but then get out of bed and go to work. 